Well, the Patriots spending spree continues today. It's another tight end. A day after agreeing to terms with Johnny Smith, the Patriots agreeing with Hunter Henry, bolstering Bill Belichick's beloved two tight end sets. No other team in the NFL has had lower pass catching production from the tight ends over the last two seasons. When they lost Gronk, uh, it all went downhill at the tight end position for the Patriots. Look at this, how they've improved their playoff chances just over the last two days. Sportsline gave them uh, under a 29% chance to make the postseason on Sunday. Now, over 50% chance to make it. So let's talk Patriots and free agency with Will Brinson and Pete Prisco. Uh, Pete, how do you like Bill Belichick kind of going back to that too good tight end approach by going out and getting John U. Smith and now Hunter Henry. $140 million in guaranteed money will get you 29% according to Sportsline. Wow, who knew? I mean, my gosh, this, this is such an anti-patriot thing to do is spend this kind of money. But when you look at their roster, you understand why they had to do it. They have so many holes on that roster, and some of them are going to be filled by guys coming back from you know opting out last year like Dante Hightower and Patrick Chung. But the reality is, this is not the Patriot way. They're spending a lot of money to try and and fill those holes, which tells me they're trying to get back into the postseason and make a run. But can you do that with Cam Newton? So I think, I mean, I tend to agree with Pete. Like, this is not the Patriot way to, to spin like crazy. But I think there's kind of an interesting economic twist here when you start to think about what's happening around the NFL. The Patriots had a ton of cap space coming into the offseason. There are not a lot of teams with a ton of cap space. Ergo, there's not a ton of teams to compete for the free agents out there, which means demand is a little bit lower, right? There's also a huge supply of players willing to take less on the open market on shorter-term deals because they want to hit free agency again once the cap moves back up, which we know it's going to do in several years thanks to new broadcast deals and thanks to just the normalization in a post-COVID world. So, I, I, I agree, like spending money in free agency is not the Patriot way, but if Bill Belichick sees an economic advantage here and believes he can bolster his roster at a time when other teams aren't able to go out there and spend all this money, and he's able to grab two great tight ends in Johnny Smith and Hunter Henry, look, this is not, you know, on the field, Rob Gronkowski, Aaron Hernandez, it, it, 2.0. That it, You know, you're not going to repeat that. Those guys are just too, too unique, were, were too unique and too different. But this is a really good combination of tight ends. Henry, a great red zone threat. Uh, Belichick has called Johnny Smith the best after-the-catch tight end in professional football. You can line him up in the backfield. You can use him in screens. You can move him all over the place. Both can run block better than people give him credit for. I love these additions. And... I think we're going to see a ton of 12 personnel from the Patriots. Now, if they go out and, like, pay for Leonard Fournette, then all of a sudden it feels a little bit like, you know, some dude buying his ex-wife's new father-in-law's hardware store and setting it on fire out of spite. Like, you don't need to do that, Belichick. You don't have to go buy Leonard Fournette. You just need to get the good players and get them at cheaper discounted deals over a short haul, and maybe you're cooking up a little economic uh, stew here. Yeah, the Patriots are just out there going like this. Meantime, the Jags, who have even more money to spend, Kind of kind of laying in the weeds for now, Pete. They haven't made any real big splashes yet in free agency. How, how are you feeling if you're a Jaguar fan? Well, they're not happy. I know I've heard from a bunch of them, and, and they shouldn't be. This has not been a good free agent class so far for the Jaguars. I mean, look, they needed a tight end. So what do they do? They go sign a blocking tight end from Carolina who barely even caught the ball. They should have been in on Jonu Smith or Hunter Henry and, and overpaid to get one of them. Uh, that was a mistake. I think they've added some guys that are average players. Carlos Hyde, they, they want to get faster at the position. He doesn't make them any faster. Philip Dorsett's coming off an injury. He makes them faster, but is he healthy? Uh, you know, they added one, a couple good players on defense. I think, you know, Ray, Roy Robertson Harris is a good player uh, from the Chicago who's going to help their down front, and I think Rayshon Jenkins is a nice addition at safety, but uh, this should be a bigger splash than it's been, and I think the fact that Trent Baalke has been out of the game, and Urban Meyer is new to the game, has hurt their free agency progress, so disappointing start for Jacksonville.
Yeah, that's a great point by Pete on the on the two guys pulling the strings there in, in Jacksonville. And I, I mean, I think what they're doing is building out some depth and maybe raising the floor. It, it's weird. I mean, there's just, you know, it's a catch-22. Like, do you want, you know, the Patriots spend all the money. We're like, oh, what are they doing? They're spending all the cash. And the Jaguars don't spend like they usually do. And we're like, well, why aren't they spending? You know, you, it's. It, you have to spend on the right guys. And if the, if the Jaguars are correctly identifying talent here that can help raise the floor for what kind of team they're going to be, then that's great. But to Pete's point about the speed, I mean, this matters, right? You're trying, if you're, are you trying to run an Urban Meyer offense in, in Jacksonville? Because if you are, you need unique players. You need speed. You need difference makers. And right now, it just doesn't look like they have them. It doesn't feel like, Pete, if I may, a team that's going to be in the playoffs next year, even as good as Trevor Lawrence, maybe. Yeah, I mean, and it's and it's a total rebuild there, though they are close getting Trevor Lawrence. I mean, Pete thinks they can compete for a playoff spot and should be able to compete in the AFC in year two of Urban Meyer. Then you have the Indianapolis Colts, who, who feel like they're there. They went out and traded for Carson Wentz. They feel like right now they should be able to contend but they've also been very quiet in free agency, Will. What do they need to do before we completely run out of impactful free agents on the market? Well, I don't think that the Colts being uh, calm about their approach to free agency should be a big concern for anybody. Chris Ballard, you know, one of the hallmarks of Chris Ballard's tenure in Indianapolis has been that he has really done a good job at cleaning up their cap situation, giving them tons of maneuverability, giving them tons of cap space with a with a really good roster in place. And you know that's how they're able to go out and trade for someone like Carson Wentz. And not that he has a massive cap hit, but you're you know giving up assets and acquiring a quarterback with 25 ish million dollars per year over the next couple of years. You know that's how they're able to go out and trade for DeForest Buckner last season. And so while we think about the Colts making these big splash moves, Buckner and of course, Wentz, you know, it, it's really not Chris Ballard's style to go out and spend in the first wave of free agency. He is a more of a conservative general manager when it comes to that sort of thing. And I would expect you see them kind of plucking up some values as we start to move along. But certainly, you know, you'd like to see him uh, get some help at wide receiver. Michael Pittman, very good. Doesn't seem like T.Y. Hilton is going to be back. Uh, they could use some more depth at tight end as well to, to bolster Carson Wentz. And I think you do need to make sure that you have the weapons in place to give Carson Wentz some confidence as he embarks on this new journey. Yeah, I agree with Will. He's like, you know, Chris Ballard isn't one of those guys that's going to dive in right away. But this is a rare situation where they do have a ton of cap room. And, and I think there is going to be a splash. Now, they need a left tackle. Could they possibly be waiting to land one of the left tackles and put him in there? And, you know, maybe they don't spend the big money uh, or try and get Trent Williams, but they go get a, a Villanueva from Pittsburgh, a guy who can step in and plug and play. I think that might be a move they make. Uh, they do need speed. There's another team that lacks speed outside. T.Y. Hilton's probably not going to come back, or if he does, it's going to be a reduced deal, and he's 31. So maybe they uh, you know, look at the wide receiver market and say, hey, we can get one of these guys because they lack playmakers on the outside. And Will mention Pittman's a good player, but he's not going to scare you with the speed. They need to get faster. Pete, you uh, put together your top 100 free agents, and some of them signed long-term deals like Dak, who was your number one. A lot of them got tagged. A lot of them have agreed to terms elsewhere, but still two of your top 10 and your original top 100 are still there. That would be Trent Williams and Kenny Galladay. Yeah, and if I were the Colts, I would uh, inquire about Trent Williams. I, he's probably going to go back to San Francisco. You keep hearing that that's what he wants to do uh, if the money gets close. So I think he's going to go back to the 49ers. But if I'm the Colts, I would look at that. I mean, you put that left side together. You have Quentin Nelson next to Trent Williams. That's a good, would be probably the best left side in the league. So that would make some sense. And then, you know, you, you talk about Galladay. And, I, you know, he, some guys around the league don't see him as a number one. Uh, I've heard more and more. Of that they see him as a two and he's looking for number one money and the reality is a lot of these receivers are number two guys who are looking for number one money and you can get into problems with that plus the draft is loaded with them you know this this used to be you could find running backs anywhere but now you can find receivers early because of all these seven on seven camps and clinics and summer playing and you know with seven on seven drills receivers learn how to run routes they learn how to read coverage and they're good at it so you can find good young receivers yeah and by the way you come at pete on kenny galladay you're gonna get the see ya treatment on twitter <laughs> but you know pete mentioned the possibility of the colts having the best left side in in football you know else would be the best left side in football if the chiefs signed trent williams they've been rumored to, to be going after him and i really think the colts and the chiefs interest there 
is probably what's holding up the San Francisco 49ers from bringing him back. You know, uh, Williams was on a podcast. I, I don't remember exactly whose it was. So many of these football podcasts out there who can keep track. But he was on with Richard Sherman, and he said that they were barking up the right tree and suggesting he might be coming back to San Francisco. That makes a ton of sense. You know, he's comfortable in the scheme. He had a good time there after a disastrous run with the WFTs for a few years who drafted him. But, you know, if you're, if you're Trent Williams, you're thinking, all right, I'm going to take 18, 19 million bucks and go to, um, you know, go to stay in San Francisco. And then all of a sudden, the Chiefs and the Colts come calling, and the Chiefs have added Joe Tooney, and the Colts have Quentin Nelson. That, that changes the dynamics about what you're thinking from a negotiation standpoint and what you're willing to take because all three of those teams are big time contenders. So I think that could be what's holding up Trent Williams from making a move. Uh, you know, Galladay is, I, I like Galladay probably more than Pete, or at least more than the, Pete, the people Pete are, is talking to, but I do understand that you know the concept that you can spend all this money on a wide receiver you know we're not sure if he's a one-trick pony and even if he is the one trick he does is really good or you can go out and you know grab a wide receiver in the draft and hope that you get what the lions have had with kenny galladay the last few years which is cheap production from a guy on a rookie contract and so with the salary cap down with teams having less money to spend with the particular teams who do have money maybe not as willing to buy on kenny galladay that's how you end up the situation where he's still shopping himself around that is will brenton host of the pick six podcast Podcast, the only NFL-centric podcast that I'm aware of besides Fantasy Football Today, which is fantasy-focused, and Pete Prisco, who's going to be joining us on Football Happy Hour today, coming up at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. We're going to be talking more NFL free agency today at 4, tomorrow at 4, and then Thursday, speaking of FFT, Fantasy Football Today, guys, with a free agency special Thursday at 3 p.m. Eastern. Coming up on HQ, Ryan Wilson's latest mock draft is out. And let me ask you this. How do you feel about Justin Fields, Kyle Shanahan? It's a possibility. Next. Want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.